Okay, so I previously did a driveway uh, rebuild on the transmission for this 95Z28. The electronic automatic got a good response. I rebuilt the 4L60E transmission in my driveway. So now I'm going to attempt to fix the fuel pump in this car. Another common uh, occurrence with these cars. And uh, again, I find myself going to the internet to get the tips and find out how to cut into the top of the floorboards so I can get to the fuel pump without having to drop my exhaust and my tank and all of that. So I have to cut the kind of trap door that the uh, factory should have done in the first place here so we can get at it. So I found that marking pens don't work so great. So I've scribed it with an awl. Now I have to go and figure out what I'm going to use to cut that hole. nice. I was waiting for that to happen. Alrighty then. I can already feel the heat from the comments that will probably come from that one. Old worn out tools, you know. Voila, one fuel pump. Now granted my cut lines may not be all that straight, but due to I end up spending more time watching my slippery old 35 year old arbor than I did watching my cutting. But the old tools did it, along with my old 35 year old portable air compressor. And this probably took about 45 minutes to get this thing cut out. And I cut it out a little bit to the left and a little bit high, being that some of the uh, posters on the internet said that they were having trouble reaching these clamps inside here. So, and getting them disconnected. So we're going to have to see what it's going to take to get in there to get those things out of there. We'll clean it up here and see what we have. Alrighty then, mostly just a fine layer of dust on top of here. Sure enough, it's back in there a ways. So, uh, looks like it'll be fun, just like they said. Okay, we'll use the camera to peer down inside here. Follow the lines. Okay. So, I've got that one unclipped. We got that one further back there, right? Get that unclipped and we can get this apart. It comes loose. Just take a peer underneath there. There's anything down underneath there. Alright, let's see if we can get this unclamped here. Basically, I have to horse around with this clamp back here, I'm trying to get this plastic clamp out. A couple of screwdrivers. Mainly just a matter of keeping after it here. Hopefully, I'll get it out pretty soon. All right, that back one off. I got this front one loose right here. There we go. Okay, that's the end of the line right there. Now, let's see what we can do here. Of course, I left my favorite gloves off, and this is what I get. Every time, this is what happens. 
There's a story behind those gloves. I really like them. I should have had them on. All right. I still haven't figured out how to get this clamp off here yet. Get the wires off. Alright, well there's quite a bit of gear hooked onto this. You know, it looks like I'm gonna have to do a little twisting here. Yeah, get that up over the top maybe. All right, we have a little hose hanging up here. I'm going to have to dig at with my uh, other finger. And looky here. There. All right, pulled up. Here's our filter here at the bottom. Right there. Doesn't look very dirty. Put down the gas. So we look down inside the tank, see what we see? Hmm. Looks we got a little baffle. Interesting to look down inside the gas tank, huh? Wow, that looks clean as a whistle down inside there. Okay, so that's the area down in there. See where the, uh, uh, where it draws the fuel from, I guess, inside the other side of the baffle. Yeah, there's like plastic all around there too. Alright. Well, there's not a lot of gas in there, that's for sure. I didn't say how this initially happened. Maybe I'll get into that story after a bit here. We can go ahead and take a quick look at this. It's still draining uh, down in there. There's a lot, evidently a lot of fuel in here. But of course, this is the inlet here. Fuel pumps inside here somewhere. Uh, looks like we have our outlet lines, return line. Uh, this must be interesting that this one is like this. Oh, it came off of off of there. Isn't that something? I wonder how that can be. Well, that's something to look at. And so this is our connection right here. Looks like we want to get these wires undone. There's a, we have to squeeze a couple of connectors if we want to get it off of this. I don't think these wires are coming off from the top. All right, so here we have our fuel level indicator and everything else. So we're gonna have to start getting all this apart. Okay, well, curiously enough, I've managed to pull this little plastic piece out from right under there, which is the wiring clip. I'm trying to figure out how to get this off of there so I can take this loose and get this whole thing out of the car so I can go work on it somewhere. But uh, they make this very secure here. So we're going to have to see. Uh, we may have to just do this work right here. The other thing that looks weird is right here that looks like where this tube would have went right here but uh, I don't know how it would go on there because there's a big tab right in the way right below it there big tab right below turn it this way you can see that thing how would that go on there with that tab in the way like that now I pried these little tabs loose right here with screwdrivers and got this loose so now I can take this and work with this. I tell you, for something that wasn't working, there sure is a lot of fuel in here dripping around. All right, so I pulled the pump off. I have got these two hoses off. Took the bracket off. was able to pull this off with another one of these fancy clamps. This pump is nothing like I was expecting to see. Three fittings on the top. Now here's the pump I'm supposed to be putting in there. Got one fitting, one out fitting on it. Alrighty then, I've got the pump out out here on the garage floor. I've been 
gnawing away at it with this knife and cut the top off of this plastic covering and there you go comes out a pump now the pump's starting to look like my other one interestingly enough too I put some power to this pump and it runs but I don't feel like going out and messing with wires in the car right now as we have uh, even though it's June here in Portland it still rains and rains and rains okay now this looks a lot more like my Walbro 255 unit here this is a high pressure high volume pump it's a lot cheaper alternative than buying from the dealer getting a stock pump now supposedly I can make this fit inside this plastic and glue it back together it looks the same pretty much on these ends here all right let's see what happens here Burst this down into a bucket of water. Well, it's definitely pumping all right. Well, that pumped a fair amount out of there. So what do you say about that? Let's try the new one. Okay, here's the new one. I don't have the hose on this. That hose is darn hard to get off, the old one. Well, that was considerably, uh, considerably more. That went almost to the ceiling. Try again. <laughs> Pumps out quite a bit more than the stock one did by a long... to go down in here fit in there and get the top back on let's work on that for a while alrighty then essentially what we have here is I've stuffed it down inside we have this rubber hose which is here to replace this piece of flex hose here which does not come off of this end and so this replaces it and we use hose clamps on it so I've kind of stuffed it together down inside here take it back out and we put the uh, we use the two rubber grommets off the stock one this one over this end like this and that allows it to fit in the bottom and then the rubber grommet here is stuffed in here not the not the best fit but so and then the idea is to put this all back together nice and tight and glue this top piece back onto here with some kind of epoxy or something. Alrighty then. I have the rubber hose clamped on. I have this part put back together. I had to go ahead and trim part of that rubber grommet for clearance right around here anyway that I ripped. And so now I just need to uh, glue this thing. Why they don't make this so it snaps? Who knows? But I'll figure a way to hold this together, glue this thing down and let it dry and then we will uh, clamp it on in the car we have uh, our kit comes with this adapter so that we can plug this end to that end back into the stock plug-in on the car okay I came up through look through my old chemicals and I came up with this trim adhesive so I figured Let's give it a try. So we will.